Hello everyone. Welcome to today's live broadcast, Bispecific Single Domain Antibody Fused Monoclonal Antibody, or SMAB, the natural form. I'm Feliza Mirasol, the science editor for Biopharm International, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. We are pleased to bring you this webcast presented by Biopharm International and sponsored by Genscript Biotech Corporation. Genscript Biotech Corporation is a biology contract research organization that provides biological research and drug discovery services to pharmaceutical companies, biotech firms, and research institutions in the United States, Europe, and Japan. It offers bioreagent, custom molecular biology, custom peptide, protein production, custom antibody production, drug candidates testing, assay development and screening, lead optimization, antibody drug development, gene synthesis, and assay-ready cell line production services. The company also offers molecular biology, peptide, protein, amino assay, chemicals, and cell biology products. For more information, please visit www.genscript.com. Within past three years alone, FDA has approved 20 novel antibody therapeutics for oncological treatment, and more than 300 therapeutic antibodies are currently in oncology-based clinical trials. Despite this exponential growth, however, most therapeutic antibodies rely on a monomeric immunotherapy-based mechanism. Therefore, there is an urgent demand for new therapeutic strategies such as combinatorial therapy and novel modalities such as bispecific antibodies. This webcast will cover the following, an overview of therapeutic antibodies focusing on the opportunities and challenges of current monotherapy, the major benefits of bispecific antibodies and the current formats used in clinical trials, an in-depth integrated single domain antibody fused to monoclonal antibody case study from rational design to preclinical development. We have a few important announcements before we begin. This webcast is designed to be interactive, and we encourage you to ask questions during the event. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found on the right-hand side of your screen. You can enlarge the slide window by clicking on the small green icon in the upper right-hand corner of the slide window, or by hovering your mouse over the lower right-hand corner and dragging the window to the desired size. Please also take advantage of the resources provided by our sponsor located in the green resource widget on the dock at the bottom of your screen. Concluding today's event, we invite you to participate in a brief survey from our sponsor. The survey will automatically appear on your screen. The slides will advance automatically during the event. If you have any technical problems viewing or hearing this presentation, please click on the question mark help widget on the dock in the bottom of your presentation window. I would now like to introduce your speaker. We are pleased to be joined today by Dr. Li Chen. Dr. Li Chen is the Principal Project Manager of Project Management Center and is in charge of the Therapeutic Antibody Discovery Service Platform at Genscript USA, Inc. Dr. Chen received his PhD from University of Massachusetts Medical School, specializing in immunology and bioinformatics. Dr. Chen has extensive experience in antibody drug discovery and has published three patents in the antibody discovery field. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Chen. Please go ahead and get started. Thank you, Felisa, for the introduction, and uh, thanks, everyone, for attending this webinar. So as mentioned, uh, I will talk about the uh, bispecific antibody today. So please note, uh, the information in these slides is confidential and no distribution is allowed yet. So this is the outline of the, my presentation. I will first give an overview on therapeutic antibodies and focus on the opportunities and the challenges of current monotherapy. To address the uh, medical needs, we will then discuss the major benefits of best specific antibodies and the review of current platform for that. I will also introduce GeneScript's proprietary SMAP by specific antibody platform, which minimizes the immunogenicity and the manufacture concerns of current by specific antibody platform while enabling bivalent or multivalent therapeutics. 
Lastly, we will give a case study for SMAP by specific antibodies from rational design to preclinical development. At the end of my talk, I will give you some facts about GeneScript, and I'm happy to answer your questions of that. Uh, first, I will give an overview of antibody therapeutics. Therapeutic antibody drugs have recently experienced explosive growth. Within uh, oncology research alone, more than 20 therapeutic antibody drugs received FDA approval for new treatments or indications during 2015 to 17. Additionally, more than 300 therapeutic antibody drugs are undergoing clinical trials. Most recently, the success of a cancer immunotherapy by blocking immune checkpoint proteins such as a PD-1 or CTLA-4 created a hope for cancer cure and trigger a second revolution that the majority of pharmaceutical companies are devoting huge amount of resources in this field. Therapeutic antibodies Therapeutic antibodies functions through a multiple mechanism of action to combat against cancers, including a direct inhibition or apoptosis for cancer cells, like anti-HER2 antibodies Herceptin for breast cancer, or through ADCC and CDC like anti-CD20 antibodies, or through immune cell activation or recruitment, like anti-PD-1 or anti-CTL4 antibodies for multiple cancer indications and anti-CD19 first ever CAR T cell therapy for leukemia, or through cytotoxic toxin delivery like ADC, antibody drug, uh, antibody drug conjugates. Let's take a look at 2017 FDA newly approved drugs with normal first-in-class mechanism. As you can see, most of them are biologic therapeutics and among them, the majority are antibody-based therapies, including the first anti-L4 receptor antibodies for the treatment of allergic diseases, and the third bispecific antibody for the treatment of hemophilia, as well as the first CAR T cell therapy for the treatment of B-cell acute leukemia. To summarize, Therapeutic and monoclonal antibody have made many breakthroughs and brought many meaningful treatments to patients and the physicians. However, even though compared with conventional chemotherapy, monotherapy, especially in immune oncology field, has significantly increased the survival rate. It still faces many unmet medical needs, in which combination therapies and the bispecific antibodies can offer particular advantages. As you can see in the, in the BMS phase three study in advanced myelomas, melanomas, combination of anti-CTLA4, Yevoy, and anti-PD-1 Opdivo showed much improved median progression free survival compared with Yevoy or Opdivo monotherapies. However, this enhanced if efficacy was associated with increased adverse effects from less than 30% to almost 60%. As mentioned, both bispecific antibodies and the combination therapy can address many unmet medical needs. However, bispecific antibodies can offer additional advantages. First of all, bispecific antibodies can provide superior potency due to novel mechanism of action. For example, the first generation bispecific antibody are almost T cell engagers, in which the underlying principle is quite straightforward with bringing T cells to target tumor cells. Other novel MOA includes uh, modulation of receptor signaling and uh, simultaneous targeting of multiple co inhibitory receptors or checkpoints, like bispecific antibodies against both HER2 and HER3 or against PD, uh, PD-1 and CTLA-4. Bispecific antibodies can also target multiple epitopes on the same target for synergistic effect. Secondly, bispecific antibodies can offer enhanced safety profile due to less of target binding and a presumably lower dose as we see safe concerns in combination therapies. Thirdly, developing bispecific antibodies is more cost-effective as it only 
develop one molecule and save half of investment in comparison with combination therapy. All these advantages of bispecific antibodies make them a potential powerful treatment for patients and physicians. To date, there are only three approved bispecific antibodies in the market, but there are hundreds in clinical trials. With this novel MOA enhanced safety profile and controlled price, the bispecific antibody market size is estimated more than 400 million in 2018 and will reach 2 billion in five years. This is a short list of in-clinic bispecific antibody strategies by many world-leading biotech companies and biopharmers, with multiple MOAs including T-cell NK cell recruiters, two ligands in activation, two factor dimerization, targeting two immune checkpoints, and to break the blood-brain barrier or to induce more internalization. In the next few slides, I will talk about various bispecific antibody platforms and focus on the GeneScript SMAP bispecific antibody platform. This is a schematic overview of different strategies used to generate bispecific antibodies derived from the antigen binding sites of two different antibodies. Symmetric bispecific antibodies are generated by the assembling of antibodies with unmodified heavy chain constant region, such as by the heterodimerization of heavy chains from two different antibodies, or homodimerization of heavy chains extended by an additional binding site, resulting in a bivalent or tetravalent molecules. Using heavy chains modified to force heterodimerization, such as using a knob in the hole strategy, results in an asymmetric by specific antibodies. Alternatively, Two different antibodies fragments, such as a single-chain FV, can be fused to a non-IG protein, such as HSA. Furthermore, two antigen binding fragments can be directly fused together, resulting in a small bispecific molecules. Finally, bispecific antibodies can also be generated by chemical conjugation of two different antibodies. To date, there are about 200 different bispecific formats and the most common 20 formats have generated various candidates in clinicals or even proved by FDA and EMA. Despite the numerous bispecific formats and the benefit that bispecific antibodies have brought to patients, there are two major concerns for bispecific antibodies. First, as most of the current formats are over-engineered, they may have immunogenicity concerns as our immune system is very sensitive to unnatural stimuli. Secondly, as these bispecific antibodies often have unnatural formats, they are not production friendly or have manufacturing concerns, including product instabilities, lower expression level, and the complex purification process. With these two major concerns in mind, we have developed GeneScript SMAP by specific format, which is a single domain antibody fused to monoclonal antibody. Our concept is very simple that we will use all natural components to achieve bivalent or multivalent purpose. Therefore, in our SMAP format, we use natural single domain antibody fused to natural monoclonal antibodies with natural or less immunogenic linkers. In this setup, SMAP has symmetric structure without FC engineering, while bringing many advantages. It has the same single-step protein purification process, and since it has all natural antibody formats, the developability of the SMAP antibody are comparable to conventional monoclonal antibodies with high yield and ability for high concentration formulation. Moreover, since we use single domain as part of the binding partners, SMAP is very flexible with ability to be multivalent. This is a direct comparison of a SMAP with other bispecific formats, including Zymworks asymmetric bispecific, AppLynx nanobody, GenMap dual body, and AppVDVDIG. 
that works asymmetric format with FC engineering may have immunogenicity issues, which will be tested in several clinical trials. Ablink's nanobody format faces the issue of short half-life, and they are developing several strategies to overcome this problem. GeneMap's dual body involves post-production processing to generate the bispecific antibodies. AbbVie's DVD-IG may introduce steric hindrance due to rigid conjugation of two antigen binding sites. This map format uses a symmetrical structure favoring production and stability while preserving long half-life and minimizing immunogenicity. But we still have to test this in clinicals. In SMAP format, we use a single domain as one part of the binding partners. And the reason is that single domain has many advantages. The size of a single domain antibody is small, so it can bind to the epitope normally hidden from conventional IgG, such as a cavity of enzymes. Because the single domain antibody has only one domain, it is easier to engineer to other formats. Compared to conventional IgG, most single domains are more stable and can tolerate high pH and the temperature that enable the antibody to be delivered via multiple routes instead of IV. Moreover, the flexibility of a single domain antibody makes it suitable to various therapeutic purposes. Due to its small size and easy to engineer, bi- or multi-specific single domain antibody can be formed to target multiple targets or multiple epitopes on the same molecule at the same time to increase therapeutic potentials. For the single domain generation, we can use library approach, either naive library, synthetic library, or immune library. Here I show a general workflow for single domain antibody discovery using immunized LAMA. After preparing immunogens and immunization of LAMA and or camel, phage library will be constructed and screened. We use patent, patent Faceba high throughput platform to screen for binders with good expression, affinity, and thermal stabilities for downstream for the categorization. For MAB generation, there are several approaches. Among the over 70 therapeutics antibody approved by FDA and EMA, the majority of them were generated by hybridoma approach. A few of them were generated through phage display library approach. Other approaches are also available for MAB generations, including single B cell based approach coupled with next generation antibody sequencing. This is a comprehensive case study for monoclonal antibody lead generation using hybridoma approach. In this practice, 10 mice were immunized and the bleed titers were evaluated by both ELISA and FAX. After that, two animals with top titers were performed with fusion and the generated hybridomas were plated into 96 wall plates. After primary and confirmatory screening, more than 800 ELISA positive clones were identified and 86 of them were confirmed with ligand blocking activity by ELISA of which 26 clones were confirmed with binding by fax to the cell surface expressed antigen and proceeded to one-run subcloning. 53 one-run subclones were obtained and uh, 26 of them select for antibody microproduction. The 28 antibodies were made by mixed lymphocyte re reaction for in vitro functional assays. After the single-dose mixed lymphocyte reaction function assay, 12 of the one-run subclones were further subcloned to obtain stabilized final hybridoma monoclones, and then a larger scale of antibody production was performed. For those 12 clones, multiple primary characterization methods, including ELISA EC50 and FAX for binding activity, ELISA IC50 and FAX for ligand blocking activity was performed. After those categorizations, five antibodies, five top antibodies were selected for final lead characterization, including multiple dose mixed lymphocyte reaction functional evaluation, aptobenin, 
cross-species reactivity, affinity measurement, and the sequencing. This slide shows another approach, the naive library to generate fully human antibodies for bispecific construction. In this approach, PBMCs are isolated from healthy donors, and the antibody heavy chain and the light chains, variable regions, are amplified and constructed to fab library for screening. The key parameters for naive library is diversity and the library size to ensure the diversity. Human naive library can generate fully human antibodies, but may have undesired affinity. In that case, affinity maturation may be required to further optimize the leads. Each lead generation platform has its own advantages and disadvantages. A quick comparison across different platforms, including combining, uh, combining quality, cost, turnaround time, Habadoma approach has the major advantage of generating antibody leads with good developability, but may encounter immune tolerance issue or has to humanize from rodent habadomas if not working with expensive transgenic mild animals. Phage display approach can screen out numerous hits within a relatively short time frame, but may encounter poor developabilities. Single B cell approach is able to generate fully human antibody sequences, but usually limited to infectious disease target. Most often, many approaches are utilized in parallel to maximize the success rate of a lead generation. In the next few slides, I will talk about antibody lead optimization for bispecific antibody generation. Before a therapeutic antibody leads entering downstream CMC development process, four lead optimizations are often performed to minimize the downstream development risk, including antibody humanization, affinity maturation, developability assessment, and immunogenicity evaluation. Due to high immunogenicity of murin and chimeric antibodies, humanization is required for rodent leads. Antibody humanization is the process of replacing non-human antibody frameworks with human ones. Successful antibody humanization depends on maintaining the affinity after replacing residues. In general, there are two kinds of humanization strategies, CDR grafting, which does not change human germline, and germline shuffling, which changes the human germline. Here I show a general workflow for antibody humanization. Antibody sequence is analyzed to select the best human germline acceptors for murine CDRs. Post-translational modifications are checked to avoid poor developability of selected germlines. After CDR grafting, homology structure modeling can be performed to identify back mutation residues and use high throughput screening to identify antibodies with good affinity, expression level, and thermal stabilities. Here I show an example of humanization of an anti-cytokine single domain antibody. We selected germline with high sequence homology, and after homology structure modeling, we identified 16 framework residues that were different highlighted in red, of which five positions were modeled to be potentially critical for antigen binding, and the putative back mutation were performed. After this humanization process, we successfully obtained humanized single domain antibody with comparable affinity and function. Affinity maturation is another lead optimization process which is aimed to increase the affinity of select antibody leads. Usually, leads from hybridoma approach have reasonably high affinity, and therefore, antibody affinity maturation may not be necessary, especially with affinity guaranteed humanization process. However, in cases that the obtained leads have relatively low affinity, such as from phage library campaign or transgenic animals, or the final application needs extremely high affinity, affinity maturation is required. Here we show the flow chart of affinity maturation process. After the antibody sequence is obtained and confirmed with binding to editing, we will perform the paratope mapping to identify the key residues for antibody-antigen interaction. 
An NNK single point mutation library is built and screened to select top binders. Then the combined library is built and screened to select best binders. The affinity matured IgG is produced and characterized. After this affinity maturation process, the affinity will increase by at least 5 to 10 fold, and we have seen cases of increasing up to 40 fold. For therapeutic lead selection and optimization, antibody drug developability assessment is very critical. We mainly focus on the chemical, physical stabilities, and the solution properties. One key developability risk is post translational modification, this, such as asparagine and glutamate deamidation, aspartate isomerization, methionine and tryptophan oxidation, free cysteine, glycosylation, isoelectrical point cost aggregation. Various tools are utilized to assess developability risk, including in silicon structure modeling, size exclusion chromatograph, peptide mapping by LCMS, and affinity by SPR-based BioCore. For developability assessment, we can use these methods for biophysical characterizations, including SEC, HPLC, ELISA, DSC to check similar stabilities, aggregation, free source stabilities, biometric stability, expression level, and solubility properties. For PTM hotspot identification, like asparagine deamidation, aspartate isomerization, we can use peptide mapping followed by LCMS and check binding by ELISA or BioCore. In case there are developability risks identified by this method, antibody engineering will be further implemented to remove or mitigate the risk. Immunogenicity of therapeutic antibody is caused by various product-related and patient-related risk factors and can cause different therapeutic outcomes in terms of the drug efficacy and the patient safety. Various methods have been established measuring and predicting immunogenicity. And FDA has guidelines for risk-based mitigation efforts for immunogenicity. There are several layers for immunogenicity risk assessment including in silicon of T cell epitope and the B cell epitopes. Then, multiple in vitro and ex vivo assays will be developed to evaluate the in silicon predictions, including DCMS assays, PBMC assays, and whole blood assays. Lastly, non human primates will be used to test the immunogenicity of therapeutics by specific antibodies in vivo. Anti-idiotype anti antibodies are often developed to be used as a reference standard or positive control in immunogenicity assessment. Here is a quick summary. We have talked about various strategies to construct by specific antibodies, including symmetric and asymmetric formats, different by specific antibody conjugation methods, with or without FC fragment, natural or F theory. The concept of gene script SMAP by specific antibody platform is to be natural with good developability and a safety profile. During by specific antibody discovery, antibody lead optimization is a combination of bioinformatics, antibody engineering, and high throughput screening and evaluation tools to make sure that the by specific leads we generated a fit for downstream development process for clinical usage. Overview about GeneScript and our facilities. GeneScript is a world leading biological contract research organization founded in 2002 in New Jersey and currently is the number one in the world for gene synthesis with over 2,000 employees worldwide. GeneScript is publicly traded in Hong Kong stock market in 2015 and is specialized in antibody drug discovery and development. Here is a quick overview of the global presence of GeneScript. With the headquarters in New Jersey, United States, and the main manufacturer and R&D center in Nanjing, China, we also have branch office in Netherlands, Ireland, and Tokyo. 
with the goal to serve worldwide researchers with highest efficiency and expertise. This is the overview of a GeneSquid platform for antibody drug discovery and the development from target to R&D. Lead generation and identification is the start. After getting the antibody leads from hybridoma or library approach, antibody engineering is performed for lead optimization, including humanization, affinity maturation, developability assessment, and immunogenicity assessment. After an optimized lead is obtained, we go to the downstream commercial cell line development and the CMC process. Multiple testing modules are in place for biomedical, biophysical, in vitro and in vivo characterization and further toxicity, stabilities, and developability studies, which are required for IND filing. Over the last decade, we have successfully delivered over 300 therapeutic leads generation and more than 110 leads optimization projects, as well as 25 CMC projects. More than three of them were moved forward to IND filing stage by the end of the 2017, with one approved for clinical trial. We at GeneScript value clients' confidentialities and intellectual properties as highest priorities. We have a very well-established IP protection system, from documentation, personnel training, to project management and hardware protections. Our IP protection system has been audited and approved by numerous world-known biotech and biopharmaceutical companies. I would like to thank you for your attention, and I hope you have learned something useful for your antibody projects. With that, I will pass it to Felisa for the question and answer sessions, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you for such an informative presentation, Dr. Chen. Before we get started on the question and answer session, I would like to remind our audience how to submit questions. You can submit questions by typing them in the Q&A box, which can be found on the right-hand side of the presentation window. And our first question is, is humanization needed in SMAB construction? Yes, so both the, uh, the IgG and the single domain antibody are needs to be humanized in the bispecific antibodies. Our services will cover both of them. And our next question is, can SMAB target glycoproteins or glycans? Uh, Yes, we can generate antibodies against glycoprotein and glycans, which can be further constructed to SMAP. And how many formats do we screen, and what's the delivery standards? Okay, so the process is called design and profiling. We design and profile different combinations, like the one mentioned in the slides. Uh, the single domain fuse to the N terminus or the C terminus of the heavy chain and the light chains. Uh, in addition to the lo localization of the single domain antibodies, we also will uh, give a try with multiple linkers. So the total will be like from 50, from 15 to 20 different formats. The next question we have is. Uh, you, you presented multiple fusion locations for the VHS, VHH. Could you address the pros and cons of the different constructions? Well, it really depends on different cases. So that's why we have the process called design and profiling. It, it's really hard for us to predict which one is the, the best until we actually test them uh, based on the affinities, the expression levels, the stabilities, and some of the developability parameters. And what is the most advanced project based on the SMAB, uh, preclinical or phase one? 
Well, uh, all of our in-house developed projects are still under preclinical studies. And there's a question here about how SMABs are provided. Um, are they fee-for-service, under partnership? Uh, what is the structure of SMAB development? Well, uh, we offer a really a flexible uh, uh, ways to do business. We can either do the fee-for-service mode, or we can do a code development mode, or we can license out the molecules to clients so that client can uh, do uh, to move it to further down to the uh, clinical trials. And is there any specific or characteristic adverse effects um, compared to monospecific antibodies? Uh, I mean, uh, it really depends on uh, different cases. Uh, it's really hard to tell whether there is like a, a general adverse effect of by specific antibodies. And do you test thermal stability at VHH or by specific stages? Uh, so we will test the thermal stabilities at the stage of single domain antibody, the monospecific IgG, and the stage of bispecific antibodies. We have checkpoint at each milestones, just making sure uh, we're ma making the right move to move forward. Now, can SMABs be tested in preclinical non-humanized rodent models? Uh, uh, are you asking? Uh, uh, some kind of in vivo animal efficacy test? I'm sorry, uh, I think the answer is yes, but that really depends on the drug target. Uh, in the SMAB approach, are FC domains maintained? Yes. And also, what is the cost of development? Uh, we do have a detailed price structures, but if you're interested, uh, you can send us an email and I will, we will uh, lay it out and share the detailed information with, uh, with you. It's, it's pretty hard to explain this over the phone call. Can you um, discuss a little bit about how many cases um, there are? Uh, you mean how many cases we have done? Actually, uh, we yeah. have work on we have work on more than twenty proof of concept cases, and more than five of them are in co-development with biotech and biopharma companies. Uh, another question we have is whether SMAB IP is protected, um, and if so, what's the priority IP production date? Well, uh, we are we are offering IP uh, license out to client for uh, to clients. So uh, I'm not sure what, what you mean by IP protections. All right. Well, we'll move on to the next question, which is, how do you test the stability of VHH at lead discovery stage? Uh, we test uh, different kinds of stabilities, uh, like, for instance, freeze-saw stabilities, uh, uh, high temperature stabilities, and the, bio the stabilities in biometrics. Uh, various assays, such as ELISA, BioCore, will be used to, to verify the stabilities. Now, are there any SMABs in development for infectious disease? Uh, currently, uh, I think all of our uh, undergoing projects are focused on the immune therapies. And are, are there any production-specific differences in terms of purification of these SMABs? Uh, can you elaborate on the question? Um, I'm not quite sure about your point. Well, if we could have um, the 
whoever asked this question, if you could submit another question, then perhaps we could have Dr. Chen uh, answer that in a little bit more detail at another time. Um, okay, uh, next question we have is, uh, how many of the PTMs are engineered and how many are serendipitous? Uh, are you asking this in general? Uh, so uh, normally there are like five or six different kinds of post-translation modifications. Some of, the, some of them are considered as high risk and some of them are considered as low risk. For instance, uh, uh, oxidations are normally considered as low risk because it can be easily avoided by proper formulation and the proper uh, uh, store, uh, storing of the drugs. For, uh, for, for low risk PTMs, uh, normally we would just leave it there and we would do some uh, developability assessment with that particular IgG sequence, just making sure that particular PTM won't affect the affinities and the in vivo uh, in, or in vitro efficacies with the antibodies. For high risk PTM like glycosylations, uh, isomerize, uh, isomerizations, normally we would do, uh, recommend to do the direct point mutation to remove the PTM motif. Uh, after the mutation, since the mutation is is uh, performed within the CDR, so after the mutation, we will have to verify the affinity and the in vitro and in vivo functions uh, all over again, just making sure that mutation doesn't change anything. And the next question we have are, are there any advantages of a SMAB over an FAB in terms of half-life? Well, generally speaking, the SMAP is relatively larger. It contains a single domain antibody plus a full-length IgG. And uh, uh, the, the stability data I showed in the slides already demonstrate that uh, the, uh, so, so, so theoretically speaking, the, uh, the stability or the uh, of the bispecific antibody, the SMAP should be better than FAB. And what kind of titers can you obtain with SMABs compared to MABs? I'm sorry, what was the question again? What kind of... What kind of titers can you obtain with the SMABs compared to your monoclonal antibodies? Well, uh, Based on the case study data, there is really not much differences in terms of titers between the SMAP and each of the monospecific parental antibodies. We have the, the biochemical data, so I'm not sure what you mean by the titer. Okay, we'll move on to um, a new question. Um, how would one get a quote for a SMAP? Well, uh, you can just send email to our local sales representatives, and they will, uh, uh, they will send the, the inquiries to the production team, and our project, pro, uh, our project management uh, project manager will evaluate the requests and provide uh, a sample proposals or a, a just simple price and timeline structures for you to uh, to go to to go over. And uh, if you have any further questions, our, our production team, our senior scientists pro from production teams will be more than happy to have a teleconference or, or do this uh, talk over the email so that we can um, uh, to finalize the, the, the proposal or the strategies for the SMAP project. Our next question is, in the PC101 example, were two different SDAB used, or was it one uh, SDAB and one MAB? Uh, so there's only one single domain antibody and one IgG was used. Before uh, proceeding to the, uh, to, the, to the format screening of the bispecific antibodies, we have done a lot of work with different candidates of the IgG and the, and the single domain antibodies, uh, both in terms of uh, affinities, in vivo functions, in vitro functions, and uh, developabilities. So only the top ones will be selected to move forward for the construction of the bispecific antibody. 
And do you find the linker choice important for your SMAB by specific? Well, we do have uh, several uh, candidates of linkers for our case. We will try all of them for each different projects. Sometimes they perform similarly, sometimes they perform different. So it's really hard to predict whether it is important or not until you actually try it. Now, um, it's possible you may have answered this question earlier, but perhaps um, some of our listeners didn't um, hear your answer. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, uh, Dr. Chen, um, answering again, how did you test the stability of VHH at lead discovery stage? Uh, we do have, uh, I, I think we have a, a, a slide showing the developability assessment regarding the by specific antibodies. So basically, we are doing exactly the same thing with, uh, with the VHH, including uh, free saw stabilities uh, and uh, uh, some other stabilities. Another question we have is, which assays are available for immunogenicity prediction? Uh, currently, uh, the, the platform for the immunogenicity pro, uh, evaluation is still uh, uh, under construction, so we're uh, not offering it as a service for now, but the service should be online uh, around 2019. And another question we have is, what is the plan in expressing and producing these SMABs in large scale? Uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? What is the, the plan? What is your plan or strategy for expressing and producing um, these SMABs on a large scale? Well, it's pretty uh, similar to what we're doing with the traditional IgG format. Basically, you just transfect the the antibody sequence, the bispecific antibody, the SMAP antibody sequence, which is just one sequence. You just transfect the DNA to the, uh, to the like, CHO cell lines and uh, select the, the stable monoclonal cell line for production. Uh, it's pretty standard stuff uh, and pretty similar to any other IgG drug for the CMC uh, process development. Now, we have some uh, listeners who are interested in getting uh, your contact information, Dr. Chen. You want to um, go ahead and let them know how they could contact you? Uh, well, uh, uh, you can contact our uh, local sales representatives and also our marketing specialist, uh, Sasida, and they will forward the information to our production team. And another question we have is um, whether you can design an IJ antibody that has the same bispecificity um, as the IgG. Well, uh, I'm not quite sure if I understand this question correct correctly, but our uh, bispecific antibody services is limited to this particular format, the single domain fused to the uh, to the four lines IgG, which is patent protected. And I believe most of the other formats are also patent protected. Now, Dr. Chen, uh, some of our um, audience members um, are interested to know whether or not um, the copy of your slides will be made available, or um, will that be something um, that they'd be able to, uh, to get a hold of? Uh, sure, we can send out uh, a, 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 a different version of the slides for clients to uh, review. Okay, well, um, I believe that's all we have for today. Um, and I would want, like to thank the audience for attending and for participating in today's event. I would also like to thank our sponsor, Genscript Biotech Corporation, uh, for making today's educational webcast possible. Um, please also take advantage of the resources provided by our sponsor located in the green resource widget on the dock at the bottom of your screen. Um, concluding today's event, we invite you to participate in a brief survey from our sponsor. 
The survey will automatically appear on your screen. You will receive an email from Biofarm International alerting you when this webcast will be available for replay. We invite you to forward that announcement to your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. We look forward to seeing you all next time and thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.